What's new in Microsoft Edge tools for Visual Studio Code 1.4? Improved screencasting. Targets now have two buttons, a screencast button and a developer tools button. In the past, the screencast has been part of the developer tools interface and was limited by it. Now we moved it to an own tab. This means you can use it like any other document inside Visual Studio Code and it gives you a much bigger browser preview to work with. This is a fully fledged browser, so you can type things in and it would work. And you also get the functionality that wasn't possible in the screencast before, like when you roll over the different parts of the HTML, you can see the margin and the padding. And if you use the inspect tool, you get the information of the overlays here. One great thing you can do with the new screencast, because it is an own tab, is that you can take any of the other code and split it up. And that way you see your code right next to your developer tools and the browser window in one instance of Visual Studio Code without ever having to leave it. Device emulation. A lot of developers asked us to put the device emulation of the developer tools of the browser into this extension. So now you get a drop down next to the URL with different devices. In this case, I'm choosing an iPhone 4 and it resizes the screen to the dimensions of this phone. You can also change the orientation and you can see in this circular cursor that this is a simulated touch interface. So you can test out if your hover interactions work or if anything else might fail on a mobile device. Live issue analysis. If you see any part of your code with a red underline, you can hover over it and you learn what's going on there. This is a form element without a label, which means it's an accessibility issue. We also test for compatibility issues, security and performance issues. This is powered by Webhint, which is the same engine that powers the issues pane in the developer tools in the browser. But in this case, it does it live in your code. You can go to any of these issues and say view problem. This gives you an inline preview of what the problem is and you can jump from one to the other in the document. The minimap also shows where there might be issues in your document. And this is not limited to HTML, but also works with other languages. In this case, I got a WebKit animation here, and it tells me that it's not a good idea to rely on the WebKit prefix, but also have the animation so all the other browsers can do the same thing. So you're learning about issues with browsers, you're learning about accessibility issues while you're writing your code without having to look it up somewhere on the web. This is live analysis, so if you're typing something that might be problematic, like an output element, it will also tell you immediately that there is an issue. In this case, it's that Internet Explorer is not supporting it, so not that much of an issue any longer. It's a great way to make sure that you learn about the mistakes that you're making before submitting it to your project and having to test them in the browser.